Welcome back to the Boat Shed. My name is John and this boat behind me is Antidote. I'm a sailor and an engineer with a dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. Now I got a lot of work to do, so today we are going to be up on the bow looking at the new foam core and I have a few other projects around the shop and garage to share with you. First let's head up back to the bow and see how that work from last week turned out. Okay, it's been almost 24 hours since we've got all these little filler pieces laid in. We're going to start pulling this out now, see what we've got. Let's start with that. Okay, there will be a little light sanding needed in some places. I'll do a little tapping on that to see how it sounds. Okay, it sounds like I have a couple of small voids here. The port side was done second and I kind of knew more about how I was doing the process by that point. Isn't that always the way it goes? But nonetheless, I still have a couple of small voids in there that I'll be able to get out with a little bit of epoxy in a syringe. Okay, generally that's pretty good. That's turned out really well. Okay, so let's take a look now at the starboard side. This little fiberglass tab here, you can see I tried to push this down using this elaborate scheme of spreader clamps and there's just a little bit of a gap here and as we move back, there you can see some squishiness. We're gonna open it up, let's take a look. So we're just looking here, that's all pretty good. That's, that's sucked down nice and tight there. What we just want to do is see right up to this edge. So we're just going to cut some of this fabric out of the way. Oh, okay, I didn't really want to do that, but since it's out of the way. Okay, so we can see here that there is a little bit of a gap. So we're gonna just throw in some more thickened epoxy under here. After a failed attempt with an epoxy filled syringe, I'm resorting to this method of just trying to cram epoxy underneath this edge to get a better adhesion. But we'll put this in the lessons learned column. Definitely better to have excessive squeeze out and a bit of waste than resort to something like this. I think I'm reasonably happy with this. And the fun continues here on the starboard side. Since I didn't have enough thick epoxy to get good squeeze out across this whole piece of foam, I do have a void in behind it. So I'm drilling some holes to try to get access to that to pump epoxy from one end up to the other. So this first hole that I drilled, I'm just using low pressure by the way. That one is staying pretty solid. Yeah, you can hear it shoot out. So I don't think that one actually got anywhere. I'll just fill that one back up and cover it with some glass. This one, the second one I drilled, you can hear that's leaking out somewhere. And I actually found a very small gap right here actually, interestingly. So we're gonna put some epoxy in there, see if we can get that to squirt out. Once that's full, we'll try and cover it. And then the second hole I can hear is coming out the end. I'll put a piece of tape on this just temporarily. So I might be able to push epoxy all the way from here to the bow. Pump it uphill, get it all full. Okay, so I've mixed up a couple ounces of thin epoxy here. And I'm gonna put it in this first hole. So I'm hoping that the thin epoxy will take advantage of gravity and run towards the back if there is any space that needs to get filled. And hopefully, if there is, this will blow some little bubbles to kind of indicate to me that it's filling. Several full syringes later of this thin 105 resin, we finally have a full lower void and are ready to start pumping thick epoxy up towards the bow. Okay, so we charged up caulking gun with as much thickened epoxy as I could get in there. Just squeeze the air out. Okay, so this is like around mayonnaise consistency between ketchup and mayonnaise. So now we're gonna squeeze it in here and we should see it come out here hopefully.
Well, that didn't go exactly according to plan. I think we're gonna be just fine, and I'd like to know what you think. So why don't you let me know in the comments what you would have done if you were in my position. And then while you're at it, why don't you also hit that like button for me, thanks. So here are a couple of my thoughts, some lessons learned after these first few attempts. First of all, I would say you always wanna make sure that you are super well prepared before you start mixing any epoxy. So all your surface is prepared, all your tools are out, your peel ply is cut, you are just ready to go. You don't have to hesitate for anything because once that epoxy starts going, it's going. For large bonding projects like gluing in these foam blocks, I would recommend that you always err on the side of more epoxy than you need. You'd probably much rather have a little bit of wasted material, deal with some cleanup, than have to do a workaround like I did where you're filling in behind a part that you've already glued in. And lastly, I noticed that the thickened epoxy will thin out as it starts to kick off. As the temperatures rise, the epoxy actually becomes thinner. So you'll wanna mix it up a little on the thick side and that way you'll have the consistency that you want as the material begins to heat up and react. So that's it for now, let's get back to work here. I'm in the garage, getting ready to clear out some space. Let's go join that action. Well, below me here we have 15 sheets of the Divinacell H100. It's taking up a ton of space. Let's get this foam moved into a new home. While I'm on a mission today to make some more space in here, I have this rack that I picked up. I've got some of my 1708 on here, some peel ply. There's some one and a half ounce chopped strand mat down there. And then this is just a roll of plastic film that I have. You see I've wrapped these up. Just helps me to control the dust on them since this is a multi-purpose space and it's really not that much work to just wrap them up quickly. So today, what we wanna do here, since we are missing a couple of spots, you'll notice here, Missing the bar for this one, and then I think I could put another one here. To get this going, I stopped by my local big box store and bought a one inch Schedule 40 iron pipe. And they sell the five footers for $30 and the 10 footers for $35. So I got a 10 footer, we cut it in half. We're gonna go on a little bit of welding project today, welding some tabs on here, welding up these bars. Let's get going. So this is a one inch Schedule 40 iron pipe, which has an outside diameter of about one and a quarter inches. And I was able to find some inch and a quarter washers, which have about the right outside diameter. This washer has the shiny galvanized coating that you're used to seeing when you go to the hardware store. It's the same washer with all the galvanization removed. And before you do any welding on this, you're gonna to wanna to take the galvanization off because if you weld with it on, it might work, but it's gonna release a bunch of gas. It's probably not good for you. Best you just skip that part. There's a couple options when it comes to removing galvanized coating, sandblasting, good old sanding. I think using a solution of vinegar is probably the easiest. This is just 5% household vinegar in a glass jar. You don't wanna use metal, a plastic cup would also work. And then you just wanna cover it lightly because it's gonna release a bit of hydrogen, just a little, for a part this small, nothing to worry about. But I definitely wouldn't wanna put on a screw tight lid on that. After a couple hours, this part's ready to go. We can weld this up. I'm just cleaning off the paint from this steel. You want to have bare metal when you're getting ready to weld anything. Well, it's not a thing of beauty, but it'll work. With the crossbars ready to go, it's now time to start making the brackets that will hold them. We're just using some simple flat stock here, marking it out, and using a little backwards engineering to get these pieces bent into shape.
All right, that'll work. So I'll get the job done. back together. We are ready to start fitting some foam into the sides here. So we're gonna start making some templates. One, two, and then I'll do a third across the back and that'll give me a good bridge to hopefully vacuum bag this whole thing down. I had some old door skin lying around and this stuff is just about perfect for making templates. It's thin, it holds its shape, and it's cheap so I can get more, no big deal. It is the next day and I want to start getting some foam prepared to lay inside the bow where I have the templates that we just worked on. We're going to bring down my work table. First time we're using it, that's exciting. So we'll get all this out of the way and get started cutting those pieces out. I just went up and added a couple of braces to these since this is supposed to be a flat edge and this one is slightly curved. I just wanted to make sure that we were holding everything in place as best we could. Template's not a lot of good if it uh, doesn't hold the right shape. So that's pretty good now. Laying these out on the fresh sheet here, I'm trying to take advantage of that nice right angle. Now I'm preparing to cut these out and getting everything marked and I could use the table saw here, but I think it's gonna be just easier to use a drywall straight edge and a good old utility knife. Let's get a fresh blade. Okay, so this first piece now is cut out and I did a quick little test fit up there. It looks like it's gonna work. We'll go up and look at all that together in a minute. But next, let's cut out this guy. So this will be the port side. Let's see how these fit. I'm expecting to need to do a little bit of adjustment. So this is all ready to go. Now my plan is to put this piece in first right now. We're gonna be able to clamp it along here. I've left it a bit deeper than it's supposed to be. 
That's so that I have lots of room to put down some, uh, some vacuum tape. So I'll put some epoxy over this, seal it up really well. And we're gonna have to make sure that it's all sort of sealed up. Yeah, then I'll be able to put my vacuum tape along the back here, up to the forward end, and then suck all this down. Okay, we're ready to put this one piece in. We're just gonna use clamps, a few spots I've marked. This little pole is gonna help hold it down on this end where I can't get a clamp in. So let's get this cleaned up, ready to go. And we'll use those three big pieces here. We'll put those in to act as sort of a guide. They have cellophane tape on them with little pull tabs so I can get them out of the way once we've got the piece set. Another thing that I really appreciate is the great folks over on Patreon that really do help make these videos a possibility. For a few bucks a month, you get some access to behind the scenes content and it really helps keep this dream alive. So if you're interested in joining that, there'll be a link in the description below. Two new Patreons to thank this week. Jim in Kansas has this really cool Victoria 18 that he has done a lovely job restoring and this is him racing it. Next, he'll be working on a privateer catch. And Jim, I'm sure it's gonna look just as good. So keep up the good work and good luck with the project. Next, Sean is a local viewer, and the other day he came by, dropped off this for me, which just happens to be my absolute favorite beer, and you gotta try it. They're from Quebec, Canada. Not sponsored. I really, really wish I was, but uh, Sean, thank you so much for bringing that by. Anyone wants to bring by a beer anytime, you are more than welcome to. We make new videos here every second Saturday about the Antidote Restoration Project. If you're new to the channel and wanna get caught up from the very start, don't wanna miss a beat. This is your playlist, and really thank you for being here today. I'm so glad you came by. See you next time. Yes, yes, I know Sailing Yabba is in the refit channel category, and they have an awesome channel, but maybe of all the losers, you could help me to be first in that group. That'd be cool. Including these stickers with all new Patreon memberships. Let's do this.